shadow over the city's vibrant streets. The Makro feud, an infamous gang war, has left no stone unturned, pitting two formidable factions against one another in a deadly dance of power and revenge. This is the story of the enigmatic personality behind this feud. This is the story of Ben Off Adawi. For someone to raise hell on earth, he has to be ruthless, relentless, cunning, and unforgiving. Adawi, also known as Ben, had all these traits. Not only that, only so much is known to us about his early days. Born to Moroccan parents, yet raised in the Dutch city of Eindhoven, Ben's story begins in 1987. Though the precise day of his birth remains shrouded in mystery, it's clear that his life took a sharp turn in his early 20s. Drawn to the vibrant city of Amsterdam, Ben soon finds himself entangled in the dark and dangerous underworld, setting his sights on the alluring and profitable cocaine trade. Young, Ambitious and driven by a hunger for wealth, Ben sets himself on a path to become a notorious drug kingpin, playing a pivotal role in the conflict that would come to be known as the Macro Feud. Ben's tale takes a dramatic turn in 2012. A staggering 200 kilos of cocaine vanish from the port of Antwerp, setting off a chain reaction of suspicion and mistrust. Two groups with a stake in the lost shipment stand out among the various groups, Gwinnett Martha's crew and Ben's own operation. Rumors and whispers circulate throughout the criminal underworld, attempting to explain the disappearance of the precious cargo. The whole fiasco left people with more questions than answers. Did a third party intervene, snatching the drugs from under their noses? Did customs agents seize the illicit shipment? Or was it an inside job orchestrated by one of rival factions? As the questions mount, Tensions between Group Gwinnett and Group Ben escalate, hurtling them toward an unprecedented and explosive showdown. In a world where silence is golden, those in the know keep their lips sealed, allowing rumors to multiply and flourish. Desperate to reconcile, Group Gwinnett arranges a meeting with the intention of resolving the mounting tensions. Yet, unbeknownst to them, Ben has entirely different plans that will have dire consequences. The fateful rendezvous is set for October 18, 2012, at the Crown Plaza Hotel in Antwerp. Najeb Boubou, also known as Bo, is Gwinnett Martha's trusted right-hand man. Tasked with representing his leader at the critical meeting, Bo arrives at the hotel, only to find that Ben's camp is nowhere to be seen. It quickly becomes apparent that the entire event is a carefully orchestrated setup. As Bo steps out of his car and makes his way toward the hotel, two men emerge from a nearby vehicle and unleash a hail of bullets. Struck by 16 shots, Bo never stands a chance. The assailants make their getaway in a white Volkswagen Golf, marking the official beginning of the Macro feud. As the dust settles, evidence comes to light revealing that the mastermind behind this chilling act is none other than Ben himself. By manipulating Chris Booman, a friend of Bo's, Ben ensures that Bo will trust the situation and walk straight into the deadly trap. In this twisted tale of betrayal, Chris Booman emerges as nothing more than a treacherous pawn in a much larger game. He committed suicide in jail on August 2013. He had been labeled a traitor and could no longer bear the fear he felt from both sides. Gwinnett Martha, incensed by what had happened, sought retribution. On the evening of October 31st, 2012, just 13 days after the incident with Bo, Gwinnett was ready to take action. Together with his associates, Dennis L, Khalid J, and Inchomar B, they gathered at Dam Square in Amsterdam city center. Armed with loaded weapons and a note bearing Ben's license plate, they were prepared for a violent confrontation. However, a patrolling police officer recognized one of them as a known firearm carrier, leading to their arrest and foiling their plan. Months later, on December 29, 2012, Ben found himself in another dangerous situation. As he and three others sat in a Range Rover, they were ambushed by a group of armed men in a silver Audi RS4. The vehicle was hit more than 50 times, but Ben and one other managed to escape. The assailants, Adele, Anwar B, and Hamza B, were later apprehended and given lengthy prison sentences. After this near-death experience, Ben laid low for a while, but his luck eventually ran out. In June 2013, he was arrested on charges of weapon possession and money laundering. Concurrently, 
investigators were building a case against him for orchestrating the hit on Najib Bubu. Ben was ultimately sentenced to 12 years in prison. During his trial, Ben provided a glimpse into his paranoid and cautious life, revealing that he had multiple phones and frequently changed his vehicles and residences. He shared stories about his extravagant lifestyle, including purchasing expensive clothes, watches, and even a boat while on vacation in Morocco. But Ben was not one to serve his sentence without a fight. He was incarcerated in a jail in Roermond, and what would unfold next would be even more astonishing. On October 2017, Ben planned a rather spectacular escape, reminiscent of a Hollywood movie. It was far more sophisticated than a simple breakout involving a BlackBerry PGP phone in his cell to orchestrate the entire operation. Ben sent a detailed map and other relevant information about the prison to his team outside. The focus point for the escape was a 23 by 13 meter outdoor area where prisoners could get fresh air. The escape plan involved a helicopter hovering above the outdoor area with a tire connected to a rope. Ben would hold on to the tire and the helicopter would fly away to a nearby field where more accomplices were waiting. A Colombian pilot was hired for 100,000 euros to execute the plan, but a helicopter was still needed. Ben's associate, Hussein, visited Kempen Airport to rent a helicopter under the guise of surprising his girlfriend with a tour. However, airport employees grew suspicious and alerted the police. After investigations and phone taps, the police confirmed that an escape attempt was imminent and quickly planned their counteroffensive. On October 11, 2017, a sunny but cold day, Hussein went to the airport with a flower bouquet to maintain the ruse. He informed the pilot of their destination, but the entire airport was surrounded by undercover police. As Hussein approached the helicopter, he was arrested by five officers. The helicopter, now carrying police officers, flew to the nearby pickup location in Wirt. Instead of Hussein's girlfriend, they found the Colombian pilot Alvaro and three men from Amsterdam in a stolen BMW. Their plan was to take the first pilot hostage and have Alvaro fly the helicopter. As the helicopter attempted to land, a police team arrived to block the men in the stolen BMW. Sofian LH sped away, leading to a dangerous pursuit and eventual crash. Sofian and three other men were arrested, while others managed to escape through a forest. Another team involved in the escape was waiting near the prison in a fast Audi. Still, the police already had an observation team watching them closely as part of their counteroffensive. When the police realized the airport team was arrested, they moved to apprehend the team near the prison. As officers approached their car, the driver, Arrow, sped off, driving recklessly and discarding weapons. After crashing, Eros was fatally shot by police, while the rest of the team was arrested. The mission had undoubtedly failed. Inside the prison, inmates were ordered back to their cells, with Ben under heavy surveillance. Officers discovered he wore multiple layers of clothing and had several phones and prison drawings in his cell. Through extraordinary police work, a major prison escape in the Netherlands was averted. All those involved, aged 19 to 27, were jailed. Ben's escape attempt proved costly, as it prevented his parole in August 2020, resulting in a full 12-year sentence. Further investigations revealed that while in jail, Ben continued planning criminal activities. This evidence led to an additional 12-year sentence. Ben's story raises questions about the consequences of his decisions and what may happen upon his eventual release. As a key figure in the Macro feud, his actions have made him a target for those waiting for his release. Subscribe to the channel for more spine-shaking crime stories. Lastly, the story serves as a reminder that crime doesn't pay in the long run. Despite the allure of a life in crime, the consequences often outweigh the potential gains. These video links popping on your screen will take you on a thrilling journey of some of the most want criminal bosses around the globe.